Hello there! I'm Uncommon, and I'm uncommonly happy to see you today. I think that was more than 10 seconds. It might might have been, but the flute had to finish playing after the 10 seconds was over. And then I had to, like, bob my head in the window, dance into the flute sound. It, there's a process and a steps. You'd act like this isn't episode 20 of this show, Tom. That that actually is the right episode. As you know, I'm, I'm, I was just stunned. Um, it's, it's almost like we're finally getting our shit together. You know, if you go look in our OneNote and you go look at the behind the scenes tab, even though I did not use Roll20 last week, I went in here and made an episode 19 page just so I would not lose track <laughs> of our episodes. We have we have made a new page for every single episode so we could take notes. Oh yeah, no, I, I I realize that that's what's saving our butt right now. So good on good on us, great on us. We need to we need to change this. Uh, I'm a little loud, you're a little is, quiet. That should be better. Oh, that should be a little better. Why why was that why was that not a highlighter? What was that? I didn't change what I was drawing with. Where are you drawing at? Uh, I'm at the last week's episode. There's nothing in there. You got to fill it in with something. Well, sure, sure. Draw, draw something for us there. Um, so that is the, that is the creepiest face I've ever seen. We have uh, yeah, added a little booger. Since since we last left off, I told you that I was going to go into the world of Adventure League. Yes, you did say that. I did that say that. Did say. And I and I, I did for it. those watching the stream. I don't know if you've actually streamed it yet. That's oh. been really bad past week. Like, but I'm pretty sure you have. Well, I streamed. I streamed the Adventure yeah. League stuff. Yeah, see. Okay, I was right. But you, you paused and you made me question myself. Yes, we're streaming right now, Tom. Live to, to one people. One people. I'm, no, I meant Adventure League. I, 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 don't, I don't feel like this is a hard conversation. I really don't. Out of all the like, the, oh my god. So, no, it went well. It went well. The whole the whole point. I, I enjoy the concept of Adventure League. I enjoy the concept of. Did it go as well as this conversation? It went pretty good. Yeah. No, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty fucking good at this whole Dungeon Master thing, as it turns out, and I just keep getting, you know, that that self. Um, here comes the ego. Yep. It's growing. No, really, it's, it's um, I don't know what the standards are. Grow anymore. Oh, God damn it! Look, I, let me at least look. I'm proud of myself. Am I allowed to be proud of my accomplishments in life, or do I just have to like? <laughs> nope, that's what I'm here for. So I make think, sure you're never proud. No one gives me any compliments ever. I just have to give them to myself. That's that's, what that's how this works. Um, it's true. It's true. But if I didn't spend so much time streaming. And making content for you great folks. I might get to spend more time with her and get those compliments. But I'm dedicated to the cause. <laughs> this is, you know, timestamp this episode of May 8th. And about three weeks from now, Casey will realize that his girlfriend actually left him a month ago. He just hasn't realized yet. I'm going to go ahead and put a, a timestamp button right there. Go real. All right. Oh, man. No, it was good. It was good. Um... We ran the same adventure twice, uh, once on Thursday and once on Friday. It was good getting to repeat it because when you put in like four four hours or more of prep work and reading, you kind of want to play more than four hours on that content. Um, I need to get another adventure. I probably need to run this adventure once or twice more and then get another adventure and start building that one so I can run you know a second adventure. But... Because I ran it twice, I now have a level three character without ever having played that character, and that's pretty cool. I'm a huge fan of rewarding the dungeon master uh, in this organized play fashion for 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 murdering innocent bystanders. One person, one, one level one character what? did die. Yeah, mm. there was a there was a trap that I probably could have um, weakened a little more. Um. It's not how IEDs work. It's not. It, it blew up, and it did his health worth of damage, and then his health in the negative worth of damage, and then some more damage all in one go. So you know what happens there. 
wah, wah, yeah. wah. instantly instantly dead um now this builds into kind of one of the talking point i want to i want to hit on tonight and we, we're going to build into it piece by piece um, Ooh. piece by piece so not only do i have <laughs> no no don't let uncommon fool you this is not planned content I, I literally am reading every word from a script. Right here it says, Tom says, this is not planned content. <laughs> Casey uh, says, I'm literally reading this from a script right now. It says, Tom says, this is, see, I could go on. But we, we thought better of ourselves and so we cut the loop right there. <laughs> I even said Oh, it. man, oh, man. All right. <laughs> That's even in the script. That's all of it scripted. Uh, uncommon crumple script. We, We planned it. Yes. See, I even had the piece of paper there, and I totally didn't have to lift off my glasses or anything. God, I hope that's not like something important you just tore up for effect. You're like, oh, it's that's my <laughs> bank statement. Fuck me. It, it, it's actually the instructions to build this desk. Um, oh. And so I hate them, and Wait, they're evil. How long? Uh, how long did this desk construction take? Because I what I I need. How do you qualify? construction um you have a box you take all the items out of the box you line them okay up does, does it start on when you have the box or when you take them out of the box <laughs> when you decide that you're going to start working okay uh th three weeks <laughs> two, two and a half two and a half of those weeks was waiting on a part to get here i mean i'm not counting inactive waiting time i just you know was it one oh. hour was it five hours it, it was it was if if you if you don't count all the the stopping going to wherever my girlfriend is complaining to her about how stupid the instructions are and walking back like three hours now now admittedly is this desk was it difficult or were you just challenged the, 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 it was it was not difficult or it it, it was all the okay so the reason I, the one of the main reasons i bought the desk is because everyone said the desk was impossible to put together and the instructions were shit <laughs> you bought it because of those reviews it still had a four star rating and i dug through i dug through the reviews those reviews still gave it like three or four stars so i was like well, if I'm going to have the desk for like 10 years, you know, putting it together is only going to be, but no, it's, it's literally one, the, the pieces were all wrong. I had to drill holes in this desk because I wasn't going to wait for them to send me a new part. I took a drill to the hole, uh, to certain holes on this desk because they just put the wrong holes in. Like they, they put in the holes that they had for like the screws. They were the same size as the screw holes. They even had screws for those screw holes. But the piece that it went on didn't have, they weren't for screws. They were for, they already had yeah, the uh, notch connector. Turning, yeah. yeah, the notch turning things. I forget yeah, what I know what you're talking on. about. And so they were supposed to slide in there. So the pe they were it was just mind, the mind desk you, was wrong. mind you you're, you're telling a story with your hands and animating it for a crowd that can't see your hands so I don't, you know that's I'm okay with that um, cam, cam locks is yes. what they're called there you go so um, I want to but go ahead yes so with that that that's the stuff that made it hard so the people who wrote the reviews are dumb because the instructions weren't hard they were just incorrect. They were just, it was just not, it was, so, but yeah, I mean, overall, I fit in the desk, which is surprising, because okay. not a lot of desks fit me, so that's number one, and it's sturdy. So, like, really, if I, you know, get over it, it's fine, I, but I I'm not going to get over it. The important thing the here is that you were able to participate in something that was as manly as we normally get like we're not we don't you don't have a woodworking shop you're not cutting wood but right now you just built furniture relying on 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 talents that you've developed over a long career of gaming and puzzle solving uh, you know <laughs> funnily enough that is that is stupidly accurate <laughs> thank you i was waiting for that moment 
<laughs> you were just talking about cam lock screws for an extra three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and, and they have you build the desk upside down. And so then you have to flip it over, which is fine if gravity wasn't stronger than some of the things that were holding it together. Ooh. So it, so, so it's not a so good you, desk. So you had to flip it over and um, uh, um, you had to flip it over, but hold it together. I mean, as soon as it's right side up, fine. But just the desk isn't built to be at a 90 degree angle. Sure. Just not. <laughs> but yeah. But that, that's the end of my desk story. All right. So, and I don't know why you just sent me that, because if you say another word, I will end this friendship and not talk to you. <laughs> uh, I forgot that I had more friends that I could taunt with that line. Um, I dove too deep on the internet, and I found things I shouldn't have found. Well, yeah, that's that's like your fault. That's 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 it's always different. That like that's for, the for way context, that, like, for context, for context, for people watching. I what dove if, too deep and, and found the ending to Game of Thrones. Uh, and so this is this like is the like, ninety the ninety percent ending. I'm pretty sure the the, the details that are ninety percent ninety ninety five percent true. The odds yeah. of them being it, false are. Mm. So, uh, uncommon and I, we play games together. We but do. there's there's certain games that you know we play, we're simply not compatible in because case Casey's knack of of wanting to discover doesn't exist he wants to know always and and so he if there if there is something he doesn't know he he will take to the internet and then know it immediately there there is definitely some truth to that statement but i want to reframe it (laughs) okay i'm okay not knowing if discovery doesn't punish me so like character builds for example are Mm -hmm. a big deal to me if i can't undo a decision if they're like hey do you want the ice sword or the fire sword i'm like uh uh like i don't know i don't know what the rest of the fucking game holds i gotta like google up all right which one of these decisions is better and somebody online will be like pick the fire sword because later there's a lot of ice enemies and they're immune to ice i'm like good i'm glad i didn't ruin the fucking game for myself because i picked the ice sword Fire sword, go. And I'll just, I'll just, you know, get better. All right. <laughs> I mean, there's all these options that, and this is the thing that Tom, you can do is you can play a game multiple times. Yes, you you're, will, you're not wrong. You will play through and be like, oh, let me learn from last time's mistakes. The the ice enemies, I'm gonna get the fire sword this time. I barely beat one game. Like I barely play a game <laughs> for, more than, for more than an hour, and I've moved on. So I have to get everything out of that hour. Yeah, I, 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 I'm impressed. You beat a game this year. That's more than you usually do. Oh, which game did I beat? Didn't you beat Outward? Oh, I did beat Outward. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I currently have um, 31 hours on Pillars of Eternity. Yeah. Look what is that? That, Man, that is something. Maybe, maybe you're a chain man. Maybe th- this year, 2019. It's, it's all that pizza talk. <laughs> it does a thing to, to, to a man. does things to a man. I've seen things. Greasy. Oh, greasy. I thought you said Reese's. <laughs> Jeez. Full of calories. I had one tonight. I guide Delicious. others to the gifts that I can't possess. Pizza pie. Every other Sunday. Check it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> A ringing endorsement. So, uh, today, yes. we're going to talk about magic items. Perfect. I want to come up with a philosophy for magic items, and yes. I'm going to create a couple things. Perfect. But this is going to require Uh-oh. spreadsheets from Tom. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to hit my button. Follow me over, ladies and gentlemen, to hopefully, my hopefully window. You're starting on, hopefully you're starting on episode 19. <laughs> I'm on episode 20. Oh, you should you should go back to episode nineteen. Okay, let me come back to episode nineteen. Uh, nothing's loaded in for me right now. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, you, 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 uh, I guess uh, sync it, sync it. I've I've been drawing for minutes. I, and by minutes, I mean literally that whole. Oh, I know. I I could tell there's a level of distraction. 
That that is not true. You take that back, sir. I, I'll I'll. It's not it's not here. I don't have anything. Okay, that's okay. Then the the fans will never know. The oh, there it is. There know. it is. I just got it. That's hideous. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, oh, right. my artwork is so good. Oh man, I'm so, okay. Now, now that we've been productive for the first fifteen minutes, that's this let's is the plan. Productive. All right, so here we go. I have here a deconstruction of player wealth. This is an old um, post that I kind of put. I didn't put together. Mm-hmm. I it's somebody else's idea. I took the pieces of it and, and saved it into a document a long time ago. Uh, All right. So let's start with let's start with the Adventure League, right? So I was talking about the Adventure League earlier, and in the Adventure League. They have, um, now they do, at least as of last September. If you don't know, the Adventure League is create a character, play with any Dungeon Master, as long as the Dungeon Master is running Adventure League legal content, and you have an Adventure League legal player, he hands you gold and experience points in accordance with official modules. You can't play the same module more than once, and it's just this grand scheme organized play. This last September, they changed things, and instead of giving you experience points and gold, and and actual treasure, because if you found treasure in a module... Right, so one person who played that module could take it with them. Um, mm-hmm. This created a lot of meta to the magic items. So what they did is they uh, went into what are called uh, advancement points and treasure points. Mm-hmm. Now, advancement points are simple. Um, for the early levels, it takes four advancement points to level up. Um, and then it takes eight, I believe is the number. You get one advancement point for about an hour's worth of play. Modules that are designed to be played in four hours will hand out four advancement points, no matter how long or short it takes you to complete them. Um, hardcover books are done by the hour. Um, and those mm-hmm. are the those are the only two things you can do is modules made just for the Adventures League or official Wizards of the Coast modules. So we could have, that Curse of Strahd could have been an Adventure League format um, you could have taken your Adventure League character out if we had, you know, thought about those things. Mm-hmm. Um, treasure points, right. Or, or if half the people cared. Or if half the people cared. Um, I care, <laughs> but nobody else does. Um, <laughs> treasure points are about 8 to 30 uh, for a magical item. 8 being the okay. most basic, 30 being the, the more expensive ones. Um... And it's like one treasure point. One treasure point equals 50 gold. And that's for the purposes of um, buying re- mundane equipment or wizards scribing into their spell books. You know, it's this nice, neat system. Now, what this does is it means that at level 14, all the characters will have relatively the same amount of power um, or the capability to have the same amount of power. Now, uh, they. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because you played a module and that magic item dropped doesn't mean you get the magic item. It means you unlocked the ability to buy that magic item with treasure points. Okay. So there's there's a list of items that are always available. Um, there's a list of items that are seasonally available. You can buy them that season. And then there's, you know, unlocks from from the modules you play. Now, there, some of this is becoming more and more seasonal. Because uh, what they're noticing is people with like 10 years of Adventure League, or however many years 5e's been out, uh, have a pretty significant advantage. Um, so they're, they're going to kind of do these like reset seasons like you see in Diablo 3. Mm-hmm. Um, with the exception, with the seasonal stuff being the modules and the seasonally available items. Uh, but that, that aside, the idea is that the magic items you get are comparable to the magic items of your uh, of everybody else who's at your level uh dungeon masters kind of know what to expect no one's showing up um with you know the perfect combo of items while somebody else has a bunch of duds um it's it's a good it's a great idea it takes away some of the what's it the the thought is it takes away some of the flexibility and fun of dnd but provides Mm -hmm. that organized play Okay. Mm-hmm. Now this isn't how I want to do it. I'm just I'm gonna I'm building okay, a foundation. 
Okay. <laughs> Building your foundation. I was going to say. This is bad. This is not oh. for us. This is not for us. Correct. I, it's not bad. It's not a system we need. Right. I want you to understand this concept because we're going to yep. go to the next step. Uh, uh -oh. This one is called a deconstruction of player wealth. It's on the left-hand side. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially what this means is if you look at the Dungeon Master's Guide, and I have actually that pulled up and available. There's chapter seven is on treasure. Um, it's D and D Beyond, so I won't stay on this too long since I don't D &D think I can just stream the whole book to everybody. <laughs> they have they have treasure tables, and they say that essentially um, the contents of a hoard um, belong to a monster based on a challenge rating. Um, and this is your, you know, roll for random treasure table. This much gold, mm -hmm. this this many gems, trinkets, etc. And so this table I'm looking at now is individual treasure for in, for for a party of four, if you will. And whenever they beat a challenge rating one zero through four monster or, or challenge rating zero through four encounter. Um, mm -hmm. And if you take this and you work out the averages. Um, <sighs> If you work out the averages of each individual encounter, uh, the average gold you would get, and then you work out the average challenge rating it would take to level up, you get a series of figures that tells you how much gold a character should earn on average per level. Mm -hmm. um, so if level one to two, according to according to the math. A, level, a fresh level 2 character will have killed enough creatures to have accumulated 140 gold for themselves. Uh, again, this is making the substance that treasure split evenly. Uh, hordes are distributed throughout the appropriate level ranges. Players use individual monster treasure as petty cash. Um, and party always finds the average total of all gems, coins, and art objects. This is no magic items. D&D 5th edition is not balanced around magic items. Um, and that's something also to take into account when we're doing our, our math. Um, okay. So given those assumptions, um, a character who's just hit level five, and this is, I'm kind of reading the paragraph, but a character who's just hit level five has 560 gold. Level 11, it's 23,500 gold, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, up to a cool, you know, 684,000 gold at level 20. Now, and nobody on the internet likes to read, so it's totally fine. Right, and I wouldn't expect we're not, we're not here because we like to read. Uh, I mean, really, this 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 episode's for Tom. This isn't for the viewers. <laughs> well, that's good because I'm the same thing right now. I am building to a crescendo, a point. Um, oh, where's my button? Oh. What do you have? I don't have the button. Ah, uh, ha, 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 ha! You lost your button in your desk reconstruction. I don't tell me about it. All right. Um, oh, that's my cup. That's where the cup went. All right. So we can take this list, and we can go back and reference the Sane Magical Items Guide. Mm -hmm. Sane Magical Items. Sane, Sane Magical Prices. It's a PDF online. It's very heavily uh, recommended. Essentially, the Dungeon Master's Guide outlines magical items and magical item prices based on rarity and dice rolls not directly related to the power that they can provide so this what this hopes to do is give realistic prices to magical items uh, more some of the more common magical items based on um just their power not just their rarity so like for example, uh, very early on here, consumable qual feather token anchor. Uh, That's a mouthful. Right. So, you know, what is what is this item? Well, let's do a quick search. As I use, well, I'm, I don't even know why I'm using Bing. Let me pull up my, here we go. Good old Bing. Yeah, I, you know, let's use the client's eye. So feather token anchor. Thank you for Bing for sponsoring this episode. You can tell it's sponsoring it because we're using it. Oh, just kidding. It's uh, cool. All right. Um, so this is a feather. Um, you can use an action to touch a token, touch this feather to a boat or ship for the next 24 hours. That vessel can't be moved by any means. 
touching token to the vessel ends the effect and the token disappears. This is a rare item. This is hundreds of gold for an item that doesn't do a lot of things that it's not going to have a big impact on your game. Or, um, but for our game, it could have a huge effect. It's always, it, it's always going to have an effect at the moment. But I don't, what? How? Be, be, because how many times yeah. in Curse of Strahd, how many times were we on a boat? Never. How many times are we going to be on a boat in this campaign in common? Often. Boom. See? So they're going to have to be touching boats with feathers all the time. Uh, Yes, but it won't break the game in the same way that a plus one shield breaks the game or changes the game. Mm -hmm. The effect on the game is mostly problem solving. Right. Okay. So I, I see why that says, now says it's game. Okay. I get the yep, yep, yep. And we can, we can get to that because that's a really good point coming up. Um, but if we use this list right here and we go back to the expected wealth... So let's say a level five character, it's 560 gold. We can come back here and we can scroll down to those coveted plus one weapons and see the plus one weapons cost a thousand gold. So they're probably not something level five characters have. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, there's a balance because the idea being we're not handing them gold and they're buying weapons. The idea is right. we want to hand them weapons and magical items at a rate that doesn't break the game. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it harder to plan encounters. And we do that by saying, I want to give them plus one weapon. When is it feasibly okay to give one character plus one weapon? We go back to the chart, mm -hmm. somewhere between level five and six. Mm -hmm. So once they hit level five, that's when plus one weapons start coming out in some kind of frequency. Um, in the early levels, when you're getting hundreds of, you know, a hundred, a couple hundred gold a level, you're looking more at potions of healing, plus one arrows. Um, if they're super lucky, you know, maybe there's a, a necklace of fireball with a single bead on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, these are the kind, like, make them enjoy, make them covet consumables for a while is what this tells me. Mm -hmm. um, and then the permanent magic items start jumping up and start appearing at level five. Yeah, that's when we start seeing uh, uncommon, uncommon magic items. Um, so when I say spreadsheets, what I'd like for you to do, Tom, hold on, I need a notepad. Yep. What I'd like for you to do okay. is be mm -hmm. tracking, um, player wealth, how much gold they have, how much gold they should have, and that, that difference there. And when we start giving a magic, magical items, how much gold that accounts for. Okay. So, so if say... Over the course of three levels, I forget to hand out a lot of... I don't give a lot of gold or magic items or anything at all. There will be a moment where we'll insert treasure later. It'll always mm -hmm. catch up to them. Or if they get ahead, we'll slow it down. The, your, your task mm -hmm. there is to pace... Is to keep us on pace with kind of the, the, the fantastical flow. Now, we mm -hmm. could decide now if we want that flow to be... Uh, if we want it to be high magic, low magic, you know, increase, change, tweak these numbers a little bit, because this is just rules mm -hmm. as written Dungeon Master's Guide. This isn't, right. you know, Lord of the Rings had a, a, a lot lower number of magical items than, say, um, uh, well, every other fantasy thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> There's one ring. Did you know that? It was just one. The whole book. And, a, like, a sword and some bread. <laughs> Really, Frodo had all the magic. I, I, I wish I wish I could have magical bread that wouldn't be calories. I'd take that. That would be a magic item I'd take. I'd pay a thousand gold for that. <laughs> Do you think you just pay a thousand? You just I want I want the level one spell, good berry. Oh, that's that was recently in um in the critical role campaign, and I've never heard of this before. But man, were they having a lot of fun with them. Good berries are good berries are good. They're very good. I mean they're they're food for a day. They 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 eliminate all survival needs. Um for and all you need is a piece of holly that doesn't you don't need you need a spell component pouch or a focus. Like it's mm -hmm. not a consumable. You you will feed yourself forever 
on one good berry a day, and you make ten with every casting. <laughs> so stupid. You could feed so many people. So many people. Um, yeah. So. So are, are we going to have the discussion about magical items in our in the world? I think that's what we do right now. Okay. Um, so uh, I can start unless you want to start. I want to hear your thoughts because I've just given okay. you some math. Okay. And I, I'm going to draw while you do this. <laughs> Here we go again. Uh, <laughs> I think content sto- based on the storyline and context, it does not make a lot of sense for the player characters to be running around hands over fist and arcane magical weapons without having some sort of negative consequence. Okay. It would either be we somehow uh, link these these magical items to uh, divine magic, right? Or either or the arcane, you know, because I would assume you know that we talked about um, Inlo and his um, and his you know how he's collected magical items and they're in the right. Where if like if there's a magical item, it's either so useless no one really cares about it, okay, or it's so powerful that even you know in those toughest minions are having troubles, you know, getting their hands on it. Well, I mean, let's think about how magical items would have evolved because a setting mm-hmm. like Forgotten Realms has existed for millennia. Um, Mm -hmm. there have been civilizations that have risen and collapsed and risen and collapsed and risen and collapsed until there are a near infinite number of dungeons and caves and unexplored areas for players to to, to check out. I mean, under, Mm -hmm. under, under mountain, I mean, under water deep, there's under mountain and who knows how many under mountain style places there are in this world over the millennia. That's kind of the idea behind forgotten realms. Our Mm -hmm. world was fresh. Mm-hmm. However long these gods have been here ruling, that was the beginning of of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so the magic items would have to have come, would have had to have been created by wizards um, more readily before arcane magic was banned. Um, and I don't mm-hmm. in our storyline, it was banned pretty quickly after the the new world was brought into place. Correct. Um, and that would have been arcane magical items. Correct. Or divine magical items, probably something more controlled through mm-hmm. the paladins and the clerics and the armies. Um, getting a hold of one of those might be as difficult as, say, getting a hold of an M16 that once belonged to the army. Right. Which is you just you just have to ask your DM uncommon and he can go to the barracks get one for you and hand it over. Yeah, and nobody accounts for those. <laughs> <laughs> if a weapon disappears, by the way, an installation shuts down. One weapon, but they lock all the gates. Nobody leaves. Wow. Yeah, no, they, they they take it very serious. That that that's like that's like a lock in. It's like a what? Like next level, like a lock-in for a church, but like next level. Yes. It's like yeah. a, it's an army sleepover. It is. Um, and then they'll do their investigation. Um, I mean, that's if like, if I'm in the woods and I, uh, one mm-hmm. of my cadets drops a weapon and doesn't realize they dropped it in the woods. Mm-hmm. It, as soon as we know, they lock down the base and it's just hundreds of people walking through the woods to find that one weapon. And then the cadet is forced to do push-ups for the rest of eternity right i mean you know <laughs> uh but anyway that's the mm-hmm. kind of control i'm thinking um on, on okay. the divine magical items so so wizard wizard artifacts or wizard created arcane magical items existed were confiscated and a handful escaped so they'll be mm-hmm. they'll be in the world um mm-hmm. divine magical items are more readily available but they um uh, but they are highly controlled, and some of those will also have escaped. Um, mm-hmm. If you're doing missions for a god, that might be a, a ready reward. Um, but then we have to go back and look at weapons that we decide are going to be, div- you know, based on divine and based on arcane. Some of them are right. easy, like mm-hmm. some weapons that create magic missile. Well, that's an arcane thing. 
that weapons yep. that, that cause shield of faith that's a divine thing but okay. what about a plus so, one weapon right and so and that that was a, a question not ever getting that far into dming there right. is there like magic where it either says if it's you know it, it has a certain school that it's attached to magical items okay don't have that same thing um you're asking good questions. Let me go ahead and pull up the magic items list. So, um, item list. let's look at the amulet of health. It is a wondrous item. Um, mm-hmm. It is. It does not specify. It is a wondrous item. Requires attunement. Does that um, say butt? Oh, buff. Animated shield. Nope, just mm-hmm. a shield. And you know, I'll probably have to consult some good friends. On, you know, is there a difference? Do we do we differentiate between arcane created and, and divine created? Um, mm-hmm. I maybe there's not. Maybe it's just all one big umbrella. Maybe mm-hmm. there there is no such thing as a divine created magic item. Um, maybe once Until it's created, now. you can't tell. So we mm-hmm. would probably be more if that's if that's the case. Like once it's created, you can't tell. It would be mm-hmm. a restriction on magical items that don't have like a Imagine, imagine a, uh, we'll call it a registration. Right, like a, a like pistol a, with the uh, like numbers scratched off it. Right. Yeah, it'll be it'll be you'll have to be registered to your region with those with those magic items, um, and if they're not, that's an unregistered item. Um, weapons that create arcane effects that are that are uniquely mm-hmm. arcane effects wouldn't wouldn't have been. You know, those are definitely bad. And then, yeah, mm-hmm. serial number scratched off. I like that. <laughs> armor of invulnerability. You have resistance to non-magical damage while you wear this armor. Additionally, you can use the action to make yourself immune to non-magical damage for 10 minutes or until you're no wow. longer wearing the armor. Um, Jeez. I mean, that's good. It's just, but, but at a certain point, everything is magical damage. I, I guess you're, you're true. Um, it's a legendary item, so this is something that's going to be a super high tier item. Um, I, that being said, I did just pick up this weapon in my D and D game yesterday. This is the the Staff of Magi. This is a legendary weapon. Mm-hmm. Um, the big things it does is uh, if a spell is cast at just me, I can absorb it and just say it didn't do anything. Um, there are restrictions based on the number of charges it has remaining, and I can't overcharge the staff because by absorbing it, I'm charging the staff. Um, okay. And if I overcharge it, it will explode and kill me. Um, 50% chance it kills me. 50% chance I'm teleported to another dimension. Um, it lets me cast a whole bunch of spells to include 7th level fireball. 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 Um, the idea here... And the reason I bring this up is this is the kind of weapon uh, that feels fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but right. unless we were really prepared for it or super high level, breaks a game. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not saying we shouldn't introduce something like this. I'm saying we should be considerate when we do. Right. All right. So you know, have high risk, high reward. You know, uh, like- I mean, I wouldn't even say high risk, high reward. I mean, I got a natural 20 on a dice to find that thing following Xanathar's rules of random mm-hmm. item finding or whatever. So it's all fucking legit. But you shouldn't let a natural 20 break your game. True. And, and well, also, like, to me, it would be, like, a great moment. Like, I, I think it would be an amazing, you know, we did a good job world building moment if, like, they come across that item in the game and they go... Yeah, let's not. <laughs> let's. I don't. I don't want. I don't want no trouble. You right. Just stay right. And, there. But but also but also they would have to be not just completely bummed out. Also, here another thing that I've sort of you know. To me. You know, I like. I kind of understand why it exists, but I also okay. think with our world, it might be a little bit m- more fun. To, I feel I feel like we could work work something out. Is I've never really understood the ability to look at an item for ten minutes and then to be able to tell exactly what it does. Almost. 
Almost. Like, is, you, is you there get, any... Well, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So there's two well, ways. Well, no, you finish. Yeah, short, mm -hmm. short rest. You can tell what it does, but you don't know if it's cursed or it's cursed properties. Okay. Um, so, so that's how they... That, well, that's, like, that's the difference. You need the identify spell to know everything about it. Mm -hmm. Cause like to me like let me hear it. Where I like you know like how would you do it? I I don't know, and that's where like you know if if you you feel like I don't know like even just like positive like because you 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 can't just like give a player a weapon and have them not know what it does right? Um, or or like all of a sudden like they 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 go they swing with it and then all of a sudden. It, explodes in their face or something right but like i th i think that it would be an enjoyable if we can get it right it would be enjoyable to figure out what a sword can do right like i, I guess this you know maybe comes into you know talking about how, how but like all of a sudden like they're they're in that fight and and you know they you know, it, it looks like a pretty tough fight. And, you know, one of the guys, you know, they spent a little bit of time studying it and they know a little bit about it. They know it's not going to, you know, explode in their face. They whip it out and all of a sudden, you know, it, it you know, they, they, when they strike the bad guy, then they see the lightning go off or, or, or whatever, something like that. Whereas, like, ma making it more than just like a, you know, I guess showing them the smoke, not, you know, here's the fire. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, somehow being able to um you know lead them to water but not drown them in it i, I guess the problem the problem you have mm -hmm. is that when they say okay i get this new magic item i want to take a short rest what is it that's right. that's yeah, how like, that happens but what's actually yes. happening is they're taking an hour with that weapon and they're they're you know they're they're smacking things they're trying to attune to it they're mm -hmm. you know poking poking things with it like you you are experimenting with this weapon to figure it out and then there's just some sense of how difficult and a pain in the ass do we want to make it because like it's exactly a, it should be a rewarding feeling not a uh, now we got to go through this 10 you know 80 gold and walk to an npc that's halfway across town just so i can use this thing or you know back in back in town five days trek away um mm -hmm. like i get your point mm -hmm. but and it was definitely one of those things they changed in 5e to make the game more fun so i'm i'm hesitant to make any home rule calls there right but they're How's like calls? yeah i don't know like It, it, it just it just still feels like I, I would would a I well I guess maybe they would because they don't actually have to go through the action right they don't like you know whereas they're like okay yeah we'll just spend a five day trek okay we're here then we'll we'll um, you know uh, you know do the identify spell and then trek all the way back I mean you know if that would actually take ten days then. <laughs> You know, it may be against it, but uh, it's, yeah, it, it's just like, I, 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 like, that's literally one of the things I, whenever I play, I just hate, like, I, I experienced it a little more in the LARP world because you couldn't just at, right after a fight, take your magic item in the middle of the woods and identify it. But right, yeah. once everything was over after the, like your hour long, whatever was over, you went back to the tavern and you hung out for three hours while you ate and, and went through the magic items and identified it. Um, mm -hmm. that was the attunement process. You, you can get around that by, we can make it, we can make it a little more real as long as the dungeons are alive. Nobody should be able to have a fight in one room and then sit in that room for an hour un, uninterrupted. Right. Not, not, you know, I mean, maybe not all the time, but there should be the threat right. and fear that this is a living place. And I just right. walked in somebody's kitchen. I'm not going to sit here for an hour. Right. Oh, and and then I think, and and if you know that's the case, if they drop a magical item and then you know they pick it up and you know they they're met with another baddie, you know, do you use it or do you not? Uh, it doesn't work. Rules is written, wouldn't work. Wait, what do you mean? A magic item does nothing until you know what it does. Wait, what? A magic item doesn't do anything until you know what it does. 
You have to take that short rest before you can use it. Unless it's a potion you're trying to, to quaff down. That literally makes no fucking sense. It literally... Uh, yeah, yeah let, me, let me pull it up. This, this, is, this is where, like... Casey slowly destroys all my dreams with rules that don't make sense. It's, it is a game. I don't know. This is not just a game. It's real life. Uh, I'm sorry. So attunement is a thing. But you see attunement. You certain items you have to attune to after you've after right. You but that you, so you, you have to time. right. So you have to attunement because to me attunement is those thoughts on my deep character. Sorry, say that again. Attunement is those three slots on my D and D Beyond sheet that I need to stick an item into because right. they're super powerful. Right. A, but attunement is technically every time. What's that? Um, it's like I have to attune to an item every time, but super attunement that makes it go into that slot. Or like, what is that? What is that? All right. So hour short, long rest. Call? All yeah. right. So a short rest is okay. So two ways to do it: the identify the identify spell fastest way to do it. Tells you mm -hmm. everything about the item. Uh, right here in the, in the text, alternatively, a character can focus on one magic item during a short rest while being in physical contact with the item. At the end of the rest, the character learns the item's properties as well as how to use them. Potions are the exception. A little taste is enough to, to tell the taste what the potion does. Attunement comes after that. So if I get a sword, okay. and after a mm -hmm. short rest, I figure out it requires attunement, I then have to attune to it. Mm -hmm. You can't attune to it until you know it's attunable. Um, let's see, activating an item. Activating an item requires the user to do something special, such as holding the item and uttering a command word. Um, those are you don't know what those are until you know until you, until you know the item. Um, wearing or wielding, using a magical item properties might mean wearing it or wielding it. A magic item meant to be worn must be donned in the intended fashion. Boots go on feet, gloves and hands, hat, etc. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know people would try to do it. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> uh, a weapon must be held. In many cases, magic item is meant to be worn, can fit a creature regardless of size or build. Uh, many magic garments are made easily adjustable or magically adjust themselves to the wear. Rare exceptions exist. So most magical armors size to fit. Um, for example, mm -hmm. draw made armor might only fit elves. Dwarves might make items usable by only dwarves and dwarf shaped folk. Um, when a non humanoid <laughs> tries to wear them, use your discretion. discretion. Um, a ring placed on a tentacle might work, but a creature with a snake-like tail instead of legs can't wear boots. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's essentially it. But, but, I don't know. If you, I mean, yes. it doesn't, I have not seen anything in my glance here that specifically tells me that they have to know what it does to use it. Um, mm -hmm. so we can... I mean, of course that, that makes our life miserable because then we have to roll the effects of the weapon by them yep absolutely a thing but that's why there's two of us um yeah i mean keeping track of that that's even one of those things where you hand a player like all right player here's the, here's the abilities but you don't know what they are yet so act surprised um <laughs> unless it's something of significance or story worth because mm -hmm. when you get there that's another that's another issue altogether um, so but back I, to I, I, yeah. Uh, well, I was thinking. I, I would think most most magical items are you know not necessarily going to be you know the you know story driven as this is the magical, but it, it would drive the story. Like mm -hmm. you know, there's very few you know you know having a magical item is you know there's having a magical item and then having one in. What is it? Pizzazz or whatever the hell this place is called? Pizzap. No, Zizap. Zizap, that's right. We didn't want to start with the... Um, yeah. And you just, I think what we... I mean, this this seems easy. We do it rules as mm -hmm. written, and you trust me to make it a storytelling experience. <laughs> uh, close your eyes, it'll be okay. <laughs> close your eyes, it'll be okay, Tom. Um, but what we do need to decide on still is how high mm -hmm. magic are we dealing with how in like level high um like see the my table my chart uh yes okay 
So, a low magic world would have magical items that are probably half or less that value. A high magic world, we could double all those numbers. We, um, you see what I'm saying? The the, the, right. the pace in which we this this chart here, the levels one mm -hmm. through twenty, is the pace in which we want to give out magic items. Well, do then do we have it? Um, do you want it to be less or do you want it to be more? Or do you want it to be the, the, uh, in the middle? What does Tom want in his magical world? Less. You want less magical well, items. Less, less obtainable magical items. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So, um, and let's also divide, let's also, when you're doing your sheets and tracking their value, uh, their current gold values mm -hmm. and their, their current magic item values let's make mm -hmm. a separate list for magic items that are that directly impact a character's ability to like strength mm -hmm. a plus one sword should be counted against their total value but you know maybe not the let me go to the list um maybe not the universal solvent which actually mm -hmm. is probably a pretty awesome thing because it's a legendary item. What is the universal solvent? It's just sol it just unsticks everything in the world. I, I believe that's what this is. Um, solvent? Universal solvent. A tube of milk, uh, milky liquid that's uh, with a strong alcohol Ayo. smell. Use your action to pour the contents Ooh. of the tube onto a surface within reach. The liquid instantly dissolves up to one square foot of adhesive it touches, including <laughs> sovereign glue, which is a magical glue. <laughs> it, this magical Listen. glue can only be broken with universal solvent or oil of etherealness or a wish spell. Interesting. This is um This is what we hold all the world together with. That's why they're so against <laughs> magic. It's that it's all held together by glue. Oh man. It, oh okay, so and th this universal solvent, it has to be stored in a jar or a flask that has been coated with an oil of slipperiness. This magical glue must be stored inside of a magical bottle. Or obviously it would stick. Stick. Wait. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah, because it's it's it holds everything together. Why wouldn't it hold? Why wouldn't it stick to the bottle? <laughs> um. Uh. Oh, that's great. All right. So a little less. Um. I'm good with. I mean, at at the rate. Think mm -hmm. about your Curse of Strahd game. You were mm -hmm. not. You were um, two or three times above this number. Really? Oh, yeah. You guys had some, some shit. Yeah, that is true. We did. Yeah, um, pretty much everybody did. I didn't, you know. So, I mean, you get your first plus one at level five in this system. Yeah. Which I don't think we we hand. Hey, this is a plus one longsword. I think we right. make longswords meaningful. We're like, this is Wolf's Bane. It mm -hmm. functions as a plus one weapon and then like some minor effect, but it's really just a plus one weapon. Yeah. I, I don't want to hand out a plus one longsword. I want to hand out like a plus one longsword that that glows light green when near salt. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then the, oh my god. Oh wait, well, you, you broke up for that way. Tiffany loves the sword. Tiffany loves the sword because then she goes and she finds salt. So like the owner of the sword is actually just a baker. Yep. No, but yeah, it, it's because like, and but like, it's not like, uh, you know, like the siren had like the sirens decked out. Um, yeah, I could see him having having some good, yeah, yeah. Like she's got a magical sword. She's got like, you know, I don't know, like a magical hat. I mean, she's not like, you know, she probably doesn't have like magical boots, magical socks, magical, you know. No, but she's probably got a couple but, of key things that are pretty powerful yeah. that she's earned over the years of service and probably stuff back home that over a long career has acquired. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go, if so. you go to like, yeah, absolutely. Go to any like somebody who's like, a, let's just say a mechanic, 
20 years as a mechanic you go to the garage it's full of fucking mm-hmm. mechanic stuff she's just got yeah. like a plus one shield hanging on the wall she doesn't like anymore <laughs> can i have it no no it's mine <laughs> all right um so let's stick with on level let's stick with on level you track the pace i'm giving out stuff wait see we we just <laughs> what we just you now now we're on level Yes, because you said, I want it to be less. And then I said, imagine Curse of Strahd. That is three times the standard. Mm-hmm. Our game of Curse of Strahd was three times the standard. So I say that on level is exactly what you want, based on what you have described to me. I, I mean, in the world, yeah, but not, like, I don't know, like... Uh, it's... I like I don't know to me like I I guess if it's divinity driven magic then it wouldn't matter as much. I could easily see this the siren at level five after they've completed a handful of things, giving them all a trinket. They're or, not worthy. Or, <laughs> right. I mean like you've just done, you know, some major task that took you to level five for mm-hmm. the siren. You can have blah. Um that being said, taking a quick look at this say magical item prices chart before we um call it um before we wrap it up rather um scrolling down there's the game changing mm-hmm. items mm-hmm. these are well, game- one of those is a plus one sword isn't it uh no there's a plus oh plus one armor shield yeah. okay so i armor is on this list because um armor class um Armor class is limited in this game. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't scale as high as it has in previous games. So when you start adding plus one armor, plus one shield, hell, plus three armor, plus three shield, when you're really popping off, um, I mean, the price of that stuff's only 48000 together. Um, mm-hmm. You're adding plus six to your armor class. Now make you put yourself in full plate. Um, so you're at 18 plus six. You, I'm sorry, now you're 18 plus 6, so 20 plus 6, so 26, just standing still. You probably got a shield spell at your back end to add it to make it 31. You're essentially wearing armor of invulnerability anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you, you, could get, you could get your level 4 character to have 27 armor. My what? My what? Your, your Warforged Sorcerer could have 27 armor. With the shield spell, a lot of things are possible. <laughs> a shield spell is plus five for a round. It costs a spell slot. It's not broken. It's just a spell slot. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's a, it, it, this, on the other hand, is 26 full time. 27 it, wait, does, because you probably took defender. Did, did, um, did, is the shield spell just one... Um, uh, one round and then it disappears. Yes, on the on the okay. on the start of your next turn, it's done. Okay, and it's uh, not a reaction. It is a reaction. It is a reaction. It okay. is a reaction. Yeah. You, uh, when you would get hit, you cast it. Um, Got it. But in this case, if you're adding plus six to twenty, you're at twenty six. You add hell. You add a cloak of protection. You make it twenty seven. You add plus one defensive fighting style from being a fighter. Now you're at twenty eight. Then you cast the shield spell, and you're at uh, thirty. Uh, 33 and not many things hit 33 sounds like a good character to me (laughs) oh yeah absolutely fun to play (laughs) um and that would would, the problem here is when things start doing that when, when a character starts getting there not all characters are getting there so we have to start adding in things that can hit that high without that can hit that character, but then they're never going to miss the other characters. Well, th- we just give the MPs glue. Glue. And then their armor plates stick together so that they have minuses to dexterity unless they take the armor. A sovereign glue monster would ruin <laughs> players' lives. You're like, oh, I'm sorry. To unstick you, this would, ca- this would, ta- this would take um, eight vials of universal solvent. That's a legendary <laughs> item. You have to travel to the deepest dungeons. You're, uh, dead. you're just going to be... You're dead now. Forget that, like, watcher's eyeball. 
That's the real monster. It's the freaking glue monster. I I like the idea of getting universal or, uh, <laughs> universal glue and just taking that into a dungeon. Oh, that would be great. That being said, I guess I mean if you stuck a dragon to the floor, <laughs> he could just rip up the floor. But he would, the floor would be stuck to his foot, and he would walk like a dog with socks on. <laughs> you guys have that image of the dog just, like, trying to step out of the... Oh, my God. He goes to breathe fire, and he's put it in his mouth, or whatever. He closes his mouth, and can't reopen it. It, it does take... It takes one minute to set. So I didn't oh, think about man. that. Um, but it can only... I mean, it requires a wish spell to break. Like... <laughs> Wait, that's only six rounds. You just hold the dragon down for six. A wish spell? A wish spell is like, what actually? Hmm. Fucking wish. It's a ninth level spell. Oh, yeah, yeah. It essentially creates any uh, any spell effect you want. Um, if you you can do anything, it can do more, but the the repercussions of casting wish uh, outside of its limited listed functions um, could kill you or ruin you. <laughs> So, okay, so how this goes is um, you might be trying to achieve something beyond the scope of the above example. State your wish to the to the GM as precisely as possible. The GM has great latitude in ruling what occurs in such an instance. The greater the wish, the greater the likelihood that something goes wrong. The spell might simply fail. The effect you desire might be partially achieved, or you might suffer unforeseen consequences as a result of how you worded the wish. For example... Wishing that if uh, wishing that a villain were dead might propel you forward in time to a period where the villain is no longer alive, effectively removing you from the game. Similarly, wishing for a legendary magic item or artifact might instantly teleport you to the presence of the current owner. Uh, the stress of casting this spell to produce any effect other than duplicating another spell weakens you. After enduring the stress, each time you cast a spell... Uh, sorry, after enduring that stress, each time you cast a spell until you finish a long rest, take 1d10 necrotic damage per level of the spell. This damage can't be reduced or prevented in any way. In addition, your strength drops to 3 um, for several days. Uh, for each of these days that you spend resting and doing mo no more than light activity, you your remaining recovery time decreases by 2 days. Finally, there's a 33% chance that you'll never be able to cast Wish again. <laughs> Jeez, why would you ever take this? This wish spell is a ninth level spell. It's the it's the the most powerful wizard thing. You can, I will, I would take this because you can create. Um, <laughs> you can unstick glue. Well, you uh, for example, the things you can do that are listed are mm -hmm. allow the twenty creatures you see to regain all hit points, and end all effects on them as described by Greater Restoration. You can grant ten creatures you see resistance to a damage type you choose. You grant 10 creatures, uh, you see immunity to a single spell or other magical effect for 8 hours. Um, you can... Da, 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 where is it at? Uh, basic use of this spell is to duplicate any other spell, 8th level or lower. You can cast any spell that exists, 8th level or lower. Like, unstick glue. Right. <laughs> Or cash wish to unstick glue. That would be such a great use. Um, this is the end of a campaign, right? You're using that for a big moment. Um, okay, so mm -hmm. we kind of we have an agreed path for magical items. Uh, uh, we, do, we should create yeah, one magical item. Potentially, it's it's you know we we have the path is we could be on the right or left guard. Right, we'll we'll, we'll analyze it, it as we go, and I, I think as long as we <laughs> keep track of what they have and the values of what they have according to that price list. Um, we won't go too far. We just might not expect their outcomes, which is fine. It would just be within scale. The question then is, let's make well, let's make one magic item while we're here. Okay, got it. Let's do it. All do right. it up. So, um, the first finale. question: Is it a weapon, an armor, or a wondrous item? A weapon, uh, a wondrous item. Okay, so it's, it's a wondrous item. Wanna... Okay. Well, all right. What kind no, of? I don't really know what that means. Okay. Look, look around your house, and the fifth object you see, what is it? Um, oh Jesus! It's a slinky. It's a slinky. All right. Okay, <laughs> so a two, slinky. Three, four, five. Yeah. All right. What is the what is a what is a fantasy equivalent to a slinky? 
Um, like a toy a mag- for children. A magical spring. Okay. Um, All right. So. So it's jump. Uh, it makes you jump higher. <laughs> or you can fall downstairs gracefully. Fall downstairs gracefully. Um, it's a slinky. It's a spring. Um, I mean, it would just be a spring. They have it in their hands. It will... They could. It's almost like a. Oh, oh wait, no, that'd be more like a weapon. Um, it's like wire, the the spell wire, but they can send a message because it's spirally. Magical slinky, like object. It's actually a spring of. Um, Spring of Returning. Okay. Throw, uh, as an action, throw this, throw the Spring of Returning um, (laughs) up to 60 feet. Um, uh, Spring of Returning at a maximum, up to, up, yeah, yeah, Spring of Returning up to 60 feet away. Um, okay. At the start of your next turn, it turns to your hand. Spring of returning. What is the purpose of that? Well, what would you... What? How could you benefit from being able to throw an object across the room and then have it back in your possession? So it's like a boomerang. Uh, I don't even say it does damage. This could make noises. This could be a distraction. Right. You could push something over in a in a faraway place. You yep. could hit a button from a faraway place. You could hit a button from a faraway place. I like now, that button. Is it is it perfectly accurate? Um I don't know. Good question. <laughs> All these questions just breed more questions. They do. But we've created something. Spring of returning. Um, as it actually throws spring and start of your next turn, it returns to your hand. If you... Uh, I'd say that's it. We, if they make a weapon attack, we can pull it out there. Mm-hmm. There's rules for um, for weapons that aren't normal weapons, I guess. Um and, and that that could be something like, you know, maybe that is an arcane magical, and the other people just don't care. Uh, or maybe they like, do, maybe the right people do care. And there's there's the sword, or maybe there's some some guy with a slinky collection. I think I think this is the smuggler's item for the first episode. The smuggler's item. Remember the first smugglers. Thing are is, is, is a slinky they're looking for a slinky an, an arcane magical item it turns out that it is a spring of returning um okay 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 and this is where we set the stage for how dangerous arcane magic items are if we can set the tone that this is this is completely <laughs> illicit this is this is not oh that's oh my god this is the... I like this. I, I I'm a bo- I'm on board. I'm right. this is the, 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 the spring of returning train and we're we're choo chewing out of the station. Alright, let me go ahead and put the art down for the spring. It's gonna be uh this thing here. Actually, you know what? It, uh, I guess a spring of returning doesn't have to be doesn't have to look like a slinky. There we go. Spring of returning. That is the official art. For the spring of returning, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uncommon, and, and I'm the spring of returning. He's the spring of returning. Thank you for joining us for episode twenty of Delvin in Deep, where we talk <laughs> fucking numbers and magic items all day, and we made one magic item uh, <laughs> that sets the stage for the first episode. Stay tuned for this and more. Take the flutes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.